Well, let's see what Commodore has for us on the computer science public domain disk. A R and D gemmer generator. Let's load that into the computer and see what that does. It might take a minute to load it. <laughs> Looks like we're ready. Commodore Educational Software. Press space bar. Oh wait. RND generator display. Student instructions. Teacher's instructions. Let's see who wrote this thing. Public domain. If it's not, contact Commodore Business Machines. RND generator written by Stephen Fenton. Upgraded by Steve Hurl. Programmer went on a PET 64 computer or a Commodore 64 computer. Instructions for the student. This display of the C64's random number generator. The program shows the format of a statement that generates random numbers. The program allows the user to experiment with the statement by asking for numbers to use in the statement. Okay. Let's get to the big show here. Just think of how boring most games would be without any sort of challenge to, to them. But luckily there is a statement in BASIC that adds a slight difference to a game. The statement is the random number generator. The statement looks like this. A equals INT B plus RND 1 times C. Close parenthesis. A is the random variable. B is the lowest A value, C less 1 plus B equals the highest value. Therefore, if we substitute some numbers for A, B, and C, we'll have a working random number generator. A equals INT1 plus RND1 times 10. This statement will give you no greater than 10 and no less than 1. Here are the 10 random numbers, 7625486862. 1B equals 1 and C equals 10. It's your turn to modify the B and C. Ooh, let's go 1 through uh, 6, like a 6-sided dice. 3515432. Four, five, six. Ten random numbers. When B is one, in, input a number for B. One through, let's go with a 20 sided dice. 17, 5, 18, 13, 17, 9, 13, 7, 11, 13. Hmm. Okay. Well, that looked like fun. But it wasn't. Let's see what else this disk has for us. Computer science. Comp concept. Computer concept? Maybe? I don't know. We'll have to look. Well, it sure does take a while to load. That's right, Commodore transfer rates aren't all that great. Especially from the disk drive. Oh, but our educational software, yay! And this was written by T. Winning and upgraded by Armand Aiello. 
This lesson gives the definitions of RAM, ROM, and variable. It is illustrates the how variables are stored and manipulated in memory through basic statements. This lesson is for beginning programmers. Sounds like, yeah. Remember to hit return after typing your answer. Memory is used to store data needed to make the computer run. There are two kinds of data. ROM, read-only memory. This is used for the computer only. So we don't worry. <laughs> we needn't <laughs> worry about it. RAM, random access memory. <laughs> it needn't. This is, is what we used when we write or access programs. RAM. RAM can be used in a variety of ways. The two most common are the storage of programs and the storage of the variable values they use. Let's proceed and how si see how this is done. The var variables are a number of numeric or alphanumeric value which is given to a name to identify it. The following example of statements is like input value B it will appear B is the variable and the statement is asking you to give B a value. Input value A. Input value B. Goes in the program memory. Wow. Value D equals zero. Add A to D. Add B to D. Add C to D. And now put D. Input value A. Um, one. Oh, look what I did. And 2 is B, and 3 is C. Value of D equals 0. OK. Add A to D, and it should, you know, add B to D. Add C to D. Now put D. Hmm. I don't know. D didn't change its variable, did it? No, let's not do that again. Okay. Well, there's two of them. Uh, like, subscribe. If you want more of this kind of stuff, uh, comment if you thought that was worth anything or not. Um, we'll see you later.